In this Tax Slayer training video, we'll discuss understanding the Affordable Care Act. By now, I'm sure we've all heard of the Affordable Care Act, otherwise known as Obamacare. A little bit of background. The Affordable Care Act is the nation's health reform law that was enacted back in March of 2010. The law's primary goal is to reform both our private and public health insurance systems in order to expand coverage to approximately 25 million Americans by the year 2023. This piece of legislation has touched almost every American in one way or another, either through our health insurance coverage or through our tax returns. The 2014 tax season was the first time that taxpayers got to experience the financial consequences of the individual mandate, otherwise known as the penalty, and this brought some additional paperwork and a few unpleasant surprises to some taxpayers. As far as the individual shared responsibility provision goes, under the Affordable Care Act, individuals, along with the federal and state governments, insurers, and employers, all share the responsibility for health coverage beginning back in 2014. The provision requires individuals and each member of the family to either have what's known as Minimum Essential Coverage, or MEC, or have an exemption from the responsibility to have minimum essential coverage or make a shared responsibility payment otherwise known as the penalty when the individual income tax return is filed and then beginning back on January the 1st 2014 individuals were required to maintain minimum essential coverage for themselves and their dependents through coverage under a government-sponsored program such as Medicare and Medicaid, an eligible employer-sponsored health plan, or a plan in the individual marketplace, federal or state marketplace or exchange, or a grandfathered health plan or other health benefits coverage specified by Health and Human Services. After entering your client's personal information in the desktop version of TaxLayer, you'll be confronted with the first question about the Affordable Care Act. During the interview process, your client will need to answer the following. Did you have minimum essential health care coverage for yourself, your spouse if filing jointly, and anyone that you could or did claim as a dependent for every month of 2016? And the explanation for minimum essential coverage is contained within the dialog box. Some tips for preparing this tax return. You want to confirm that all persons listed on the tax return, including the taxpayer, the spouse, the qualifying dependent children, and any qualified dependent relatives, all have health insurance. This is known as the tax family for calculating the individual shared responsibility payment. For example, let's say the taxpayer is covered by his employer plan, the spouse, her employer plan, the dependent children are covered by one or both of the parents employers plans and the other dependent relatives through the marketplace or other government sponsored plan. Taxpayers will now receive a form 1095B and a form 1095C. These forms are fairly new and they document how each member of the tax family obtained their health coverage. So for individuals, each individual must have minimum essential health care coverage or qualify for an exemption from the coverage or pay a penalty which is known as the individual shared responsibility payment. Employers with at least 50 full-time employees, including full-time equivalents, must offer affordable minimum essential coverage. And these are the Affordable Care Act mandates. For the majority of tax filers, the changes only meant checking a box to indicate that they had health coverage during the tax year. So what does this mean within the program? Well, 
the first question, did you have minimum essential health care coverage, we would answer yes. The second question, did you, your spouse, or a dependent enroll in health insurance through the marketplace or exchange, we would answer no. And this would satisfy the requirements for the majority of taxpayers. But some of those who signed up for Obamacare had to take additional steps when filing their tax returns. Last year, consumers who signed up for health care through a marketplace or exchange received a Form 1095-A, which was needed for filing the federal tax return, and the same will be true this year for 2016 return. So here's an example of the Form 1095-A, the Health Insurance Marketplace Statement, and taxpayers will need this form to file the Premium Tax Credit Form, or Form 8962. So in the TaxSlayer software, how do I enter insurance that was paid through the marketplace or exchange? We would answer yes to the question, did you, your spouse, or a dependent enroll in health insurance through the marketplace or exchange? And at that point, a diagnostic warning would appear at the bottom of the client's 1040 screen telling the preparer to complete Form 8962. So in this scenario, for my client in the software, did you, your spouse, or a dependent enroll in health insurance through the marketplace or exchange, in other words, healthcare.gov? If we answer yes, and then exit the personal information menu, here's our diagnostic warning on the 1040 screen. Please complete Form 8962. From the 1095A, the taxpayer or preparer can determine whether he or she received the correct amount of financial assistance, whether he or she is subject to a penalty, and whether he or she can claim an exemption from the mandate. Now let's discuss the premium tax credit. As far as the advanced premium tax credit goes, the government provides financial assistance to some Americans to lower the monthly cost of health insurance on an advanced basis. These credits are applied directly to monthly health insurance premiums. However, since the tax credit is often determined based on an estimate of household income, it needs to be reconciled on the tax return taking into account the actual household income when the taxpayer files the return. So, a taxpayer may owe back money if he or she underestimated their income, which would reduce a refund, while it could increase a refund if the taxpayer overestimated their income. Obamacare's premium tax credits can be paid to the insurer in advance in order to lower the monthly premium on a marketplace plan or they can be adjusted on the tax return. Tax credits are based on income and they're available to folks making between 100 percent and 400 percent of the federal poverty level. This is between 11,880 and 47,520 for an individual and between 24,3 and 97,2 for a family of four in 2016. Some tax credit options. When you enroll in a marketplace health insurance plan with financial assistance, you'll have two options. You can get it now you can elect to have the health insurance company apply all or some of the estimated tax credit to your monthly premium, or you can get it later. You can claim the tax credit when you file your federal income tax return. If your income or family size changes throughout the year, it may have an impact on your premium tax credit. So you want to be sure to report such changes to your state's health insurance exchange so that they can adjust your premium amount accordingly. Failing to do so may result in you or your client owing money when filing your taxes if your income increased or family size decreased. If you or your client's income decreases 
or family size increases and you fail to report it, then you may receive a refund. In general, a person may be eligible for the premium tax credit if he or she meets all of the following. If he or she bought health insurance through the marketplace or the exchange. If he or she is ineligible for coverage through an employer or government plan. If he or she is within certain income limits. If he or she does not file a married filing separate tax return except for certain circumstances. And he or she cannot be claimed as a dependent by another person. For example, according to the marketplace exchange, John is eligible for a premium tax credit of $35.52 per year. During the open enrollment period, he chose to purchase the second lowest cost silver plan, which is the benchmark plan, for the upcoming year. This has an annual cost of $5,000. He decided to take the premium tax credit in advance, which means that the IRS will send a monthly payment of $296, which is $35.52 divided by 12, that's his tax credit, directly to his health insurer. This bring da brings down John's portion of the health insurance premium from $417 to 121 per month, which he will then pay directly to the health insurer. A person could have elected to have advance payments of the tax credit sent directly to his or her insurer during 2016 or wait to claim the credit when he or she files a tax return in 2017. If advance payments are sent to the insurer, the payments will then have to be reconciled on the 2016 tax return, which again will be filed in early 2017. The amount of the advanced premium tax credits that people receive is based on an estimate of the income the household expects to receive for the year. The final amount of the credit is based on the actual income as reported on the tax return for the year that the advance payment was received. This means that people whose income for the year is higher than they previously estimated could conceivably have to pay back some or even all of the advance payments that they received. On the other hand, people whose income ends up lower than estimated could get a refund when they file their taxes. How will you or your client claim the credit. Well, if your client receives advance credit payments or plans to claim the premium tax credit, he or she must file a federal income tax return for that year. If your client chooses to get advance payments when your client files his or her 2016 return in 2017, the total advance payments received during the year will be subtracted from the amount of the premium tax credit calculated on the return. If the premium tax credit computed on the return is more than the advance payments made during the year, the difference will increase the refund or lower any amount of tax owed. So in other words, if the premium tax credit is greater than the advance payments, this could, be more, could mean more of a refund for your client. If the advance credit payments are more than the premium tax credit, the difference will increase the amount owed on the return and result in either a smaller refund or a balance due. In this case, the advance credit payments is greater than the premium tax credit. This equals a smaller refund or more tax owed. Well, how will your client claim the credit. If your client chooses to get the credit later at tax filing time, he or she will claim the full amount of the premium tax credit when they file their 2016 tax return in 2017. This will either increase the refund or lower any balance due. 
If a person is already receiving advance payments of the credit, then nothing needs to be done unless there's a change in circumstance such as income, marital status, or family size changes. These life changes need to be reported to the health insurance marketplace as soon as possible. If the taxpayer can afford health insurance but chooses not to buy it, then he or she must have a health coverage exemption or pay a fee, which is considered the penalty. The fee is sometimes called the penalty, as I said, a fine, an individual responsibility payment, or the individual mandate. This penalty is the higher amount between a flat fee and a percentage penalty. For 2014, we see that it was 95 per adult. 2015, 325 per adult. Now for 2016, we have an increase. $695 per adult, $347.50 per child, or 2.5% of yearly household income. You would calculate the penalty for any tax family member who does not have minimum essential coverage or a family member who doesn't qualify for one of the exemptions. So, as defined by the law, the fee for not having coverage in 2016, you will pay the higher of these two amounts, 2.5% 2 of your yearly household income, only the amount of income above the tax filing threshold, which is about 10350 for an individual, is used to calculate this penalty. The maximum penalty is the national average premium for a bronze plan, or $695 per person for the year, $347.50 per child under 18. The maximum penalty per family using this method is $2,085. But keep in mind, you'll pay the higher of these two amounts. You or your client will pay the fee on the federal income tax return filed for the year that you don't have coverage. Now most people file their 2016 returns in early 2017. What happens if you or your client doesn't pay the fee? Well, the IRS will hold back the amount of the fee from any future tax refunds. There are no liens, levies, or criminal penalties for failing to pay the fee in the provisions of Obamacare. There are some exemptions. This penalty can be lowered or totally eliminated if the taxpayer qualifies for one of the exemptions based on financial hardships, religious affiliations or gaps in coverage, among others. The taxpayer may need to apply for some exemptions and receive approval through healthcare.gov. Exemptions from the marketplace or healthcare.gov are obtained online at this web address. A unique nine-digit code per exemption per taxpayer or household will be assigned. The taxpayer will report this exemption code on Form 8965, which is the health coverage exemption form. Back to our tax return. I see that this return contains a health care responsibility tax. If you or any household member had health care coverage exemption for any months during the year, we have a diagnostic warning we can complete Form 8965. I've got a couple of options to select Form 8965 in the program. I can go to menu option number 7, the Other Taxes menu, and there's Form 8965, the Health Coverage Exemptions Responsibility Payment, located there, and you see the $695 penalty is showing up. The other way to go about it from the client's 1040 screen is in the search for keyword field. I can simply type in 8965 and the program will take me to the form 8965 menu. And again, here at the form 8965 menu, this is where we'll enter our exemptions to the responsibility payment. Part 1 
gives us the marketplace granted exemptions. So what I would do in Form 8965 menu is Access, Menu Option 1, Part 1. Select the New button for my client's return. Select the individual that I'm going to add to Part 1 of the Form 8965. Click OK. This brings me to the Part 1 Marketplace Granted Exemptions menu. I would select option number three, the exemption certificate number that my client received from the marketplace, and enter that number. Once I do that, I'll then need to enter the number of months that my client was granted the exemption. And within the program for this client, I'll just select the full year box, click the OK button, and the shared responsibility payment is now zero. Now part three of the Form 8965 deals with coverage exemptions. Accessing that menu option again brings me up to my Edit Individuals for Part 3 Coverage Exemptions dialog box. I would select the New button, select my client, select option number 3, the exemption type. Now again, these are the exemptions that aren't granted by the marketplace. And here's the list of exemption types that I could choose for my client. So in this particular case, we'll select option A. The coverage is considered unaffordable for my client. I'll hit the OK button. And then, just as before, I need to indicate the number of months claiming the exemption. And for this client, I'll select full year. And once again, the shared responsibility payment has now been reduced to zero. Now we have some new forms relating to the Affordable Care Act. There's the Form 1095B. Now 1095B is a health insurance tax form that reports the type of coverage that you or your client has dependents covered by the insurance policy and the period of coverage for the prior year. This form is used to verify on the tax return that you and your dependents have at least minimum qualifying health insurance coverage. Now again we don't attach this 1095B to the tax return. This is kept for client records. Taxpayers will need this 1095B to report and verify. This is a verification form on the tax return that the tax family did indeed have qualifying health coverage. It's basically proof that the tax family had the type of coverage that's required by the Affordable Care Act. Obamacare requires certain employers to offer health insurance coverage to full-time employees and their dependents. These employers must send an annual statement to all employees eligible for coverage describing the insurance that's available to them. And the IRS created this form, the 1095C, to serve as that statement. Once again, we don't attach this to the tax return. This is kept for clients' records. This is the employer provided health insurance offer and coverage form. So who has to file this form? Well, the Affordable Care Act defines those employers who must offer health insurance to their employees. The law refers to them as applicable large employers or ALs. A company is an AL if it has at least 50 full-time workers. And a full-time worker, according to the law, is someone who works at least 30 hours a week. 
So what are the relationships of these two forms, the 1095C and the 1095B. The 1095C describes the coverage that's made available to an employee. This comes from the employer. 1095B comes from the health care provider. This form provides details about an employee's actual coverage. Again, this is a verification form, including who in the worker's family was covered. The 1095B is sent out by the insurance provider rather than the employer. A taxpayer has to complete Form 8962, the Premium Tax Credit Form, and file it with his or her tax return in order to claim the Premium Tax Credit or if he or she received premium assistance through advanced credit payments. The individual mandate exemptions, again, are claimed on Form 8965. New lines on the 1040, fairly new lines. Line 46 reports any excess advanced premium tax credit repayment from the 8962 for 2016. Line 61 of the 1040 incorporates the individual mandate for 2016. Line 69 will report a premium tax credit from the form 8962 for 2016. We encourage you to stay informed. Under our system of government, laws are certainly not written in stone. Congress can modify or repeal them. The President can refuse to enforce them. The courts can strike them down. So please stay informed on the Affordable Care Act and what's coming in the future years. We thank you for watching this Tax Layer training video.